uh, in a new building that's being renovated right now, which, which will be part of the Lake House Music Academy. So we're actually moving into a new building that'll be just amazingly incredible. Uh, Monmouth University is actually moving uh, their music industry uh, uh, department into that building. We will be in that building and it will be connected to the Lake House Music Academy. So uh, just amazing times here in Asbury Park. A lot of fun. Um, and I just want to make sure I say everything that I was going to say. Uh, last year, um, the Garden State Film Festival moved out of the city. Uh, we tried to recruit a new film festival to come in, um, which didn't work out too well, so we created our own film festival. I hope some of you were here last year. We had the Asbury Park Music and Film Festival, a really unique film festival that uh, combines film and music together. It was an amazing event, and uh, we're going to do it again this year, April 9th, 9th 10th, and 11th. So mark that date down because it'll just be an incredible weekend here in Asbury Park. And why it will be an incredible weekend is because we have a new partner uh, as part of our film festival, which happens to be Sony Classic Films. So we took a we started out as nobody and took a major step. So we're going to have a really great film festival this year. So I hope you'll all come come and uh, support the foundation at that film festival. Right now, I'd like to bring up uh, John Cavanaugh. Uh, and John is going to introduce our, our program tonight, but before he does that, uh, I just want to recognize John for all the hard work he's done here. Uh, John uh, joined us when we, actually before we opened the doors, thank God, uh, but as you can see, some of his great, most of his great work is actually on the walls here, um, but he is our curator and really has carried us through uh, the last uh, three years here on this space and has done an incredible job. If you've been here, we've just had some amazing exhibits um, and it's really very cool that we're ending on a very high note here uh, because this, this has really been the, the best exhibit that we've had here. Uh, but John has done an amazing job. I want you to recognize John Cavanaugh. And as good as John is, you know, he has a great group of people um, who volunteer to help him, uh, and they're all volunteering here tonight, too. So please raise your hand if you're part of that crew. Great job. We're forever, forever thankful. So with that, John Cavanaugh. That was scary. Um, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity. It's been a wonderful, incredible three years here. It's been magical. Uh, to share your, uh, my passion with photography and the wonderful history of music in Asbury Park has just been an incredible ride. And Tom's right. This, what better way to uh, move on to the next adventure than to have the most incredible event and exhibit of all our three years here. First, I want to uh, apologize. I know you're kind of sardined in here, um, but as you can see, most of you are family of a certain gentleman that I, we will introduce in just a minute. So I know there's going to be a lot of reminiscing on stage, off stage, and I'm just so happy that you, all you came down. And I want to thank all the photographers and the artists that brought these wonderful photography, the artwork, the images of just probably a small part of this man's wonderful career. And I just want to give a round of applause for all these people that loaned these things. Just a couple now of quick housekeeping rules. Obviously, it's a tight room here and everybody. Um, we'll try to keep to your seats as much as you can. Take the photos from your chairs. If you need to, we have the restroom in the back. If there's anything where we have to get up and leave, we have the front entrance, and we also have the entrance in the back. Um, I want you to sit back and enjoy yourself, and right now, I'm gonna give to Jay Lustig. Thank you, uh, John, and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'd like to start with a, a brief story. Uh, 
um, about uh, that relates to me. Um, I was at the Star Ledger from 1989 to last year. Uh, I now have a website, njarts.net, uh, but I was at the Star Ledger for a long time, and I was there because of John. Um, in the 80s, uh, it was a really great time for rock music, of course. There were a lot, a lot of huge shows, uh, arena shows, stadium shows, all kinds of stuff going on. And the Star Ledger didn't have a full-time pop rock writer. Uh, had a, George Kanzler was there. He wrote about rock, but he also wrote about jazz. He was really more interested in jazz. Uh, he was great, but rock really wasn't being covered. And John went to Mort Pye, who was the editor of the paper, and he said, you really need a full-time dedicated rock person. Uh, so the Star Ledger, for the first time ever, uh, hired a rock person, and that person ended up being me. Um, John didn't recommend me, George knew me, but uh, thank you <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> um, also, over the years, of course, uh, I use John a lot as a source. Uh, I think uh, a lot of New Jersey reporters know that if you really need to turn to someone who really knows what's going on, and who's gonna give you an honest, assessment of what's going on and isn't going to pull any punches uh, and who will give you a very colorful quote and really make your story uh, pop in a way that it didn't uh, before, you can go to John Schur. So uh, I'm glad to be doing this for those reasons. Also, just this is John Schur. Uh, of yeah, I used to be. <laughs> used to be John Schur. Um, I think it's no exaggeration to say over the uh, last, you know, over really, if you look at New Jersey rock and roll, and there's no one, no behind the scenes figure who's more important than John Schur. Um, we're going to talk tonight, I guess, mainly about Asbury Park and the Capitol Theater, but then, I mean, there's stuff we're not probably not going to touch on very much with the Meadowlands and Roosevelt Stadium in, in Jersey City and all kinds of stuff, uh, national stuff. Um, Rock is uh, rock promotion is now very corporate and national, but you know it used to be a thing where there were huge, hugely important figures in the different markets, uh, and John Sher was our hugely important person. So uh, anyway, I'd like to also introduce uh, Jim Monahan. <laughs> and Dan Neer. Uh, as you probably know, they are both former WNEW uh, FM disc jockeys, and uh, also uh, Dan is now at uh, Sirius XM, where he's on uh, Deep Tracks and The Loft, uh, right? Those are, yeah, just want to make sure I got that right, uh, and doing a lot of other stuff. Uh, Jim is on uh, WDHA, and uh, they're going to add their memories also uh, as well. Uh, wanted to... <laughs> Um, wanted to mention that um, I did a big interview with John about, uh, really mostly about Springsteen, uh, his work with Springsteen, his involvement with Springsteen in the early days. Uh, that was posted yesterday on Backstreets.com. Uh, it wasn't really conceived to coincide with this, but it kind of turned out that way. Uh, but I think uh, if you're here tonight, you probably would want to check that out. It's a very detailed interview. Uh, mostly about Springsteen. Uh, I also want to mention that, you know, John is still very active in concert promotion. Uh, I went to a uh, show he promoted a couple days ago, actually, Tony Bennett at NJ Pack, great show. Um, so, uh, He's older than I am. I know, <laughs> he's older than uh, just about everybody. Um, so I'd like to start by uh, asking John about Asbury Park, because Asbury Park was really his entry into the, the music business. Um, at the Sunshine Inn, uh, you were hired as a booker, uh, 1969, 70. I think you weren't quite sure, but well, yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. So, uh, so what are your memories of the the Sunshine Inn? Um, well, thanks everybody. First of all, thank everybody for 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 coming. There's some great old faces here, um, some new ones, uh, some people that are very influential in my life. Uh, so uh, it's, 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 it's very nice, it's heartwarming. I've never done anything like this. I've always resisted it, but uh, um, this was unresistible. And the, the people here in Asbury were, uh, were so together and so nice. Barbara Berger, I don't think I mentioned, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know she was 
stuff out of the warehouse with my staff with Diana Cuthy uh, and Hood, the old Hood. Is Hood here? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 Hood! Some of the, uh, you know, some, some of the original uh, Ed Berry and, and Capital people uh, are here, and, and a lot of them helped. Tommy Catrino helped. Uh, Moisey's here, did all this fabulous artwork that you can, you can see. And, and whoever I'm forgetting, I apologize. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I started, I, I, I used to, uh, my family used to come uh, to Bradley Beach uh, in the summers, uh, never for the whole summer, but for a weekend or a week. And, uh, and when I got a little bit older, uh, I used to hitch down here from uh, West Orange, where I grew up. Uh, in those days, you could hitchhike down the Garden State Parkway. <laughs> Pick you up and drop you off. Uh, and uh, they were great years. I remember them, you know, w wonderfully, you know. Um, and uh, when I got a little bit older, um, I became a... Uh, uh, in order to stay in Asbury, because uh, you know, we were sort of pretty lower middle class and my folks really didn't have the money to, to give me to stay in a, you know, in a, in a hotel or a motel or, or anything, so I, I became a miniature golf hustler. Uh, <laughs> and there was a miniature golf course right in Bradley Beach, uh, right across the street from uh, the Lorraine Bradley Hotel. Um, and uh, I'd hang around there and there'd you know, inevitably be you know, a dad with his kids and his wife that, you know, were macho, and um, I'd just sort of hang around and say, hey, you want to play? And, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd bet, you know, a buck or two, uh, and, and uh, um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I muffed a couple in the first couple, and, you know, they'd, du they'd double it to two bucks, you know, and then I, I, I could putt really good, and um, I think two bucks or maybe even three bucks a night could stay at an old rooming house named, uh, uh, owned by a woman, woman named Ma Tischler. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but it was two or three bucks a night. You, you, you could stay there um, in Bradley, and at night you walked to Asbury. And, uh, um, you know, there was all kinds of stuff going on. There was all kinds of music. Mo Septi, God bless him, was doing big time shows at Convention Hall when I was, you know, 14, 15, 16. Uh, and uh, so it was really the place I got my, my not my only, but my first real uh, um, education in, in, in music. And of course, there always were the Coors Girls. So those of you that live here, you know, there, there were uh, um, sort of like Orange Julius stands in Asbury Park. And, and they used to import girls from uh, always blonde hair, cute girls, you know, must have been of German descent, uh, uh, from the Midwest. And uh, they had dormitories on top of the on top of the uh, on, to on top of the stands, and uh, so many a time I and a few friends of mine got caught trying to scale the walls up into the <laughs> dormitories. But uh, anyway, that, that 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 was all a lot of fun. And then that that summer, which I'm, I'm guessing the summer of '70, uh, might have been the summer of '71, uh, I got myself hired uh, by the guy named Bob Fisher who owned the Sunshine Inn. Sunshine Inn is not as legendary as the Stone Pony or as, you know, any of the other, you know, sort of legendary rooms that are still, <laughs> to a large degree, still here. But it was a big old warehouse, and uh, you know, it held a couple of thousand people. Uh, and this guy uh, was this guy was a real Jersey hustler. You know, he could have been on The Sopranos, but he didn't know who any of the acts were. Um, and and I only knew who the acts were because I liked music. It wasn't because I was really terribly ingrained in the in the industry. Um, I was a little bit, but 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 not much. So um, I booked a bunch of shows there, uh, and it's the first time I met Steve Van Zandt and uh, and Bruce Springsteen uh, when they were in Steel Mill, and Steel Mill sort of became the house band. They played there, you know, many many times, uh, and it started a, um, a friendship with those guys uh, and with uh, you know. Many of the guys that were in the original East Street Band, uh, David Sanchez and, and Clarence, of course, and um, this, this was before Max. Uh, and and uh, um, you know, so so uh, you know that, that that was real fun. It, it, it was real fun, and I got and I got bit by the show biz bug. Uh, so um, you know, I, I I booked those shows, and and it was just a ball. I mean, it was just you know. You, it wasn't like really work, 
uh, you know, you, you talk, called some agents and you, you dickered a little bit with them, you booked some shows, shows came, you know, and, and you know, all your friends came and, and the local musicians came and uh, the cute chorus girls came when they could get over the work. Uh, and and uh, um, so, it, it, you know, it was a ball. So that's how I, I really... I really started, it was my first real job, and as I think uh, one of the articles I read in the last day or two, <coughs> I, I said, uh, this guy Bob Fisher, he, uh, he paid me at the end of the year, at the end of the summer, and the check bounced. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't have that much fun. Uh, so I remember driving down to Asbury and going to the police, de police department and swearing out a warrant for the guy's arrest. You know? And uh, sure enough, a couple days later, I was still living with my parents, um, ring, knock on the door, the doorbell rings, and there was Bob Fisher, you know, with, uh, with cash. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, that, you know, that was my, my indoctrination. And then uh, um, a year, a year, well, well in, in December of 71 is when the Capitol opened. Um, the summer before that, uh, we did a show at Wall Stadium uh, down the shore. And uh, it was the first video <coughs> big show I ever did. It was a Jefferson Airplane when they were at the absolute height of their career. We saw those of you that live down here in No Wall Stadium. It's a little um, racetrack, midget car racetrack. I think it, it is. I think it's still there. Um, and uh, we sold 15,000 tickets, which was like gigantic, you know, at the at the time. And then the city or the township of Wall decided to try to join us. Uh, and. Uh, um, that's not so a good thing, right? No, it's, it's, not, it's not a good thing. And uh, I had my, my lawyer at the time was a guy who uh, eventually uh, was one of the owners of the bottom line in New York. Um, but he was a New York attorney and he didn't know anything about New Jersey law. So he tracked down uh, the Asbury Park firm of Van Shellowitz, Barr, and Sell and Benella. Uh, and uh, um, a guy named uh, um, Robert Ansel. Robert? Robert. Yeah, Robert. <laughs> I, have some, I have some people who help me cheat here. Um, uh, and um, uh, we, hired, we hired Robert, and uh, he had a, uh, a young, probably just